Hello and welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from a very hot Germany. like a hot mess today but it's been a while since I've last posted so I thought I would just come on even if it's it might be shorter than usual but I would just like to show you my one new work in progress one new finished object and some incoming and a bit of chatter um, yes so let's start <laughs> My finished object is the Summer of Romance project, my pollen shawl. It's finished, it's done, it's um, blocked even. The only thing what I haven't done is, is to weave in the ends a little bit. And I have a pattern right there on my desk. Let me just grab it. This is the first version of my pattern. All photos are just placeholders because I want to make another one using these four balls of yarn. I talked about this before, but I thought I would quickly run through this, this one. Let me put it on. It's quite massive. <laughs> and I'm planning another version, um, a mild version, holding two strands of yarn together. For this one, I was using four ply fingering weight yarn, and I was using a 3.5 millimeter hook. And as I said, I'm planning another version, which would be holding two strands of yarn together using possibly a five millimeter hook, maybe even a six millimeter, I'm not sure yet. And yes, the name Pollen Shawl comes from Penelope Farrington and Colin Bridgerton from the Netflix series Bridgerton. Or rather from the book series by Julie, Julia Quinn. And yes, I've chosen the couple for the Summer of Romance Cal run by Clarisabeth, who is Crochet Cakes, and Claudia, who is Crochet Luna. And I've talked this about this a lot these last couple of times. So even though I have written everything down, I couldn't write well, I didn't write the final numbers for how much yarn you need for color A, B, C and D, these things. And I still have to check my gauge again with a 3.5 millimeter hook. Um, yeah, I have to measure, measure the shawl. And write in here this, uh, where the schematic is, I have to write in this measurement, this measurement, this measurement. And the shawl actually changes the shape multiple times. <laughs> it's uh, at one stage is triangular, then it's semicircle shaped, then triangular again, and so on and so on. So it's an adventure. It's a ride. <laughs> I've got a lot of abbreviations and stitches and my pattern. I usually write patterns in US terminology. 
over my with the exception of my Murid magazine patterns but usually I think crochet in US terminology and so the first part which is this red bit here that's called the bee like bzz, buzz buzz bee <laughs> the bee for Bridgerton it's supposed to look like a bee that's the body these are the two wings and this is this might be the most complicated part of a whole shawl so I'm thinking about making a video tutorial for that part and that takes that's row one two how many seven seven rows for this red bit here that's the start of a shawl then this light pinky one here that's called hearts for romance and that's row oh, it takes quite a lot 13 rows and i have to check i have to check the repeats mm, yeah so this is what i highlighted in yellow <laughs> then the third part the third part Actually, the hearts go is including the red section here. So this part is the next section that's called fans and pretty gowns. Then you have this part here. That part that's called whistle down. <laughs> then you've got this part here this part here that's called scandalous <laughs> and then we have part yeah in that section i actually had to fudge <laughs> at one stage i was supposed to have 16 double crochets on either side and um, I had 16 on one side and 18 on the other. So I made a decrease on one side. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> That's another reason why I have to make a second version of it. So I left it for like two, three weeks after writing it all down so that I can go into the pattern without knowing anymore what I wanted to do, if that makes sense. So I want to see if I can recreate the shawl just by following my own instructions <laughs> and hopefully thereby finding out if I have to change how I describe what I want you to do. <laughs> Anyhow, so then we have... This bit here, this bit here, the color, colorful bit here, that's called secret admiration. And then there is a border down here, that's called this one here, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is actually the title of the Bridgerton book telling you or telling us about the love story of Penelope and Colin. And the last part, which I actually haven't crocheted because it's optional, would be a ruffle border here. If you want to, you can add a ruffle border down there. One pollen shawl finished. And yeah, don't wonder about the color choices. I used leftover yarns and um, here I actually was holding two strands of yarn together from a lace weight sock yarn. Um, that's another reason why I couldn't actually write down 
how much <laughs> yarn you need of fingering weight yarn. It's a little bit tricky if you use your leftovers. But if you don't care about gauge and you just pull your yarn out of a bag and you just check, uh, you just use whatever you have, then uh, yeah, you can do that with that shawl as well. So the pollen shawl, once more. And the pattern, which is almost done. Here you, I added a photo of uh, how it looks before the wet blocking. That's quite crumpled up here. A scandalous part of a shawl that that will make the shawl quite wobbly or uneven but if you block it wet block it then it smooths out really nicely and this is the hashtag which i'm planning to use pollen shawl so if you want to subscribe or follow that hashtag on instagram already then you can see my second version developing and yeah, just for just for continuity, <laughs> I've created a little new logo design. And I've used Canva for that, which is free to, you can do a lot for free on Canva, like logos and videos. And I've made my intro on Canva as well. So yeah, great tool for podcasters. So, yes, that's coming along. And the shawl is my finished object for today. Um, <laughs> the next version, the proper version, which I will enter in also into the Across the Pond shawl, Cal, Cal with K, but crochet welcome. Um, will be made in Marianti yarn fingering weight or like something, maybe it's sport weight, I'm not sure. It's high twist, so we'll have a great definition. And I remember that this colorway was rock lobster. Um, something was coral, I think that, and that's peach blush or something like that. And this is fun fair, fun, summer fun. actually look it up uh, fresh <laughs> and it's 360 meters per 100 gram yes let's see how that turns out then I have a new work in progress <music> started a new project using John Arben yarn and that's um, that's also over there <laughs> hot mess again the label um, from memory it's Devonia for ply in the colorway cinder glow and it's a rich brown reddish brown this, this actually looks more in reality, you can see a little bit of red still. I don't know if you can make it out, but here and there, you can see a little bit of dark red. And the shape is very odd, isn't it? Can you guess what it is? <laughs> I can tell you that I will use this together with a deep like a burgundy red, which turns out more brown in this light, but it's actually more like a glass of red wine. So these two colors together. And this is Landlust Alpaca Merino. This will be colorway, color work. Hot mess. <laughs> this will be a color work cowl and it's called the fast net by Anne Michelle Thielen and it's 
it's crochet color work and she's asking you to use the center single crochet but ever since i'm working on the aliak sweater which is not using the center single crochet which i actually really love for color work but um, this one is using the extended single crochet so i thought I would do the same here, same stitch, and see how that turns out. Um, it's time for me now to move on to the color work section. And the <laughs> it is a bit of an interesting construction. Um, basically, I will make a tube, which will then be divided up here again, and then I will join it here, and it will be like a big chain like an anchor chain or something like that and fastnet the name fastnet comes from comes from a lighthouse on the south coast of ireland and yeah i think the designer comes from ireland and by coincidence <laughs> um i actually painted a watercolor from or off the same lighthouse um, if i can find it then i will put up a picture of it here and obviously this will be for autumn autumn wear and i asked i asked on the last zoom meeting Last night, actually, um, I asked Faye which color I should use because I had not only that uh, dark red wine color, but also like a beige brownish color, like a like a bunny, a brown bunny color, a hair color to go with it. But I think this would be too, too drab. <laughs> so this will be a great, great combination and it won't, the contrast won't be too much. I expect that you will still see the contrast, but not like bang in your eye contrast. Um, yeah, so at the moment, at the moment I have a bit of a woodland theme going on. <laughs> it changes so often. Last week it was, and I didn't share this here, but last week it was Mexican and Frida and Dia de los Muertos uh, style kind of vibe and um, I actually bought some sandals from uh, well they were made in Mexico I think handmade I will show them to you next time because today I'm a hot mess <laughs> anyhow so today I had quite a bad week last week I don't want to dwell on it. I'm coming here because I actually want to get nicer thoughts and feelings. And that's why, where crochet comes into the game, into the life. <laughs> um, where was I going with that? Hot mess. Yeah, anyhow, that's my excuse for shopping <laughs> I bought some project bags I know I know I have enough but they were on on special so oh yes uh, incoming <laughs> woodland theme Get a grip, woman. Incoming project bag with a little bunny drawstring bag. Guess how much it cost? 10 euros something. How could I not? I might, I might take one of these for a giveaway or I will use it for my mother's birthday, which will be in August. Maybe I will give this one to my mother. She loves knitting as well. Not so much crochet, but um, yeah, 
maybe this will be a present for her birthday in August. I know she doesn't watch my podcast, um, but I think that will be nice. And I bought this at a shop in, at Etsy again. I know it's controversial to buy things on Etsy, but I love handmade things. I want to support small shops and this is the easiest way for me to do that unless I go to yarn festivals. But more about this in August. So another drawstring bag which I bought from the same shop and I really love the fabric and I can't tell you what fabric it is but it looks to me like a lovely afternoon with an English tea time on an English couch somewhere in Devon or maybe in Dartmoor and there is a, possibly a dog running around on the lawn. <laughs> Drawstring. They are lined with um, cotton, cotton fabric, and I think it's lovely. I might give it an ironing. Sorry, they just arrived today, so they're fresh out of a bag, uh, oh, out of a box. So talking about the box, sorry, rustling. This is also, this is one of the reasons why I love buying handmade things from little shops. It always has a personal touch. So this is what it came wrapped in. Isn't that the cutest little strawberry? It's uh, made with fabric. <laughs> so yes, I think I should make some strawberry jam and put this around the, around the lid or something. <laughs> Or maybe, maybe strawberry liqueur <laughs> and put this around the bottle. <laughs> the shop is called Craft Küche. Küche is kitchen for in, in German. But obviously you can't use the vowels with uh, double dots all, all over it. Uh, so it's craft Kuche <laughs> um, on Etsy. This is this is her shop's name. Yeah, and um, no regrets. <laughs> Do I ever have regrets? Possibly not. That was. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not getting into that. That's just vibes I want to. Vanish Satan. <laughs> Some of you will know what I'm talking about, but the other my, the others will just scratch their heads and ask what's going on. So uh, no, nothing to do with uh, lovely crochet and knitting community, by the way. Just private life, giving me a I don't know, whatever. Someone said, "What's not important in five years." can't be important right now. I hope so. So lovely new bags and there are more coming. So sorry, not sorry. Last but not least, chat. As I said, this will be a short one, so I just wanted to say to you that I've started <gasps> No, rewind! More incoming! Just a second. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Come on, Claudia. It can't be that far away. Uh... I put it here in my bag from Das Mondschaf, which was part of my Yarni advent last Christmas. 
and um, actually the I had to repair it a little bit it came off it was sewn too close to the edge but these things happen especially if you push so much yarn into it that it's close to bursting so here we are more incoming because I've bought from Maschenwunder, which is a shop in Hamburg in Germany, and I bought from them two balls of this yarn, Yarnadelic, in the colorway Pink Moon, and it looks like this. Ooh. This is my wool orbit. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> okay, two balls of yarn. Yarnadelic. <sighs> Walking over a meadow. Lovely sheep left and right of me, far on the horizon, the sea. <sighs> yes, sometime in the future. So, Jana Delic, Pink Moon. I don't know which pattern I will use, but I bought it for the John Arm Textiles Zoom meetings this week. So, tomorrow night at half past six to eight o'clock British summer time, there is a Zoom meeting run by John Arm Textiles and it's free, but you do have to buy a ticket using Eventbrite. If you go to their website, you can find all the details there. I've bought a ticket, so obviously the amount of people taking part is limited. Otherwise, it's just a crazy, crazy thing. <laughs> so, tomorrow is the Chat and Netta Zoom meeting, I believe. And next weekend, is the John Arben Textiles Mill Open Weekend, or I think that's how it's called. And as part of that, there are lots of things happening. Check out their program, please. I've booked two more tickets. One is for, and it feels like I've talked about this before, probably on my last episode, but I will just repeat myself. Uh, on the... Ninth, there will be a show and tell Zoom meeting, and you can actually there's a hashtag, which I still have to look up again, because my mind is not working right now. But this is the hashtag, and you can post your finished project. You can post your projects which were made using John Arben yarn. May it be crochet, knitting, spinning, it doesn't matter. Post it on Instagram using this hashtag and you can win a 20 pound voucher for your next shopping spree at John Arben. Yeah, so I'm planning to show my fake howl, which is my first color work cowl design sorry my <clears throat> for some reason my voice is going <laughs> i don't know why why is today so strange i shouldn't have come here but i was missing you so that's why anyhow i'm planning to show the fake cowl on the ninth and possibly i mean i've used john arm textiles a couple of times I've made a frost shawl, so I know where that one is. Just have to take it out of the box. That was made with alpaca, supreme. 
and I have my Cape Townian cowl and I've used this this shade of yarn in it for the penguins. Yes, it sounds strange. Pink for penguins, but believe me, I did. <laughs> so the cinder glow is for the chat and netter evening Zoom meeting. And the other one on the 9th, I will try to show my fake cowl. And on the 10th, talking about Faye, <laughs> Faye is going to give us a lovely talk about crochet on the 10th. And I will post the time here because I'm a hot mess and I'm bound to get it wrong. <laughs> I have a bowl of walnut ice cream waiting there for me. So maybe some cooling down will improve my brain and until i see you next time i hope that i will see you on one of the lovely zoom meetings i can tell you that they mean the world to me it's so much fun meeting like-minded people and yes that there is some sanity still left in the world and that we are not just strangers but that we actually do have lots of things in common and yeah. So without further ado, I will see you next time with plenty of incoming things. <laughs> um, by the way, I hope that doesn't trigger anything with you. I know not everyone is able to purchase things, but I hope that showing you these things that it will give you joy. Um, like for me, it, it, it gives me joy just looking at these things. It's not about owning them, it's about the beauty of how they are made and, and what they look like and giving me ideas for upcycling for instance i mean if you have if you have lots of fabric and you can sew or you know someone who can sew then this might be a project and you can do things like that together i i usually uh, sew the bags together with my mother because my sewing skills are meh <laughs> but we are spending quality time together, making bags, sewing bags, and sometime I crochet and she's knitting. And oh, if I remember, I will put in a little scene here, <laughs> which was hilarious. Um, I was crocheting on my on my fastnet cowl project, and she was what was she actually knitting? Oh, she had bought. She had bought some new yarn as well because we went to my local yarn shop uh, with the one which where I've took you to the one where we've been together you and me I mean <laughs> and um, I gave her a pair of my knitting needles and she was checking a gauge and she had ripped it three times already she had frocked it because at first it was too tight, then it was too loose, then she had discovered a mistake, so her expression in her face is as she was unknitting. She she has a technique where she, she doesn't drop stitches and then picks them up again. She unknits. She unknits. <laughs> it's adorable. I mean, in knitting, she's, she's better than I am. It's just crochet where I am the unicorn in this family. So, uh, yeah. Did I say goodbye? I think I did, like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so, have a great rest of the week. Maybe I will see you on one of the Zoom nights. And if not, then maybe at the next Zoom meeting of a crochet clan. Thank you for watching and for being such a good friend. And for all your lovely comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'm not always that hot. 
this kind of thing. So um, give me another chance, subscribe, and you can always unfollow me next time. <laughs> Bye!